Oh, hey, it's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. How's everybody doing? Uh, I hope you're doing better than some other people because boy, oh boy, um, people will watch this video maybe years down the line and see what's been going on during this era. Hopefully at that time, things would have worked itself out. But uh, this coronavirus is getting a little crazy, huh? So, um, it's like a ghost town where I am. Uh, very little people. Uh, I ran out to CVS last night to get some uh, generic Benadryl for my daughter who is kind of allergic to apples, the peels. So she started scratching and itching. Her throat was getting kind of itchy and that's when you need Benadryl. So I ran out there to, to get it. Uh, it was early. It was like six o'clock or something like that, you know, barely, barely evening. And uh, I was the only one in there. There was a pharmacist and two other people. That's it. Uh, those two other people work there, you know, so I was the only customer in there. And uh, first thing she said to me was, wow, what are you doing out? <laughs> I'm like, is there martial law going on? You know, and uh, they've announced like there's some things like that. Like in New Jersey, I believe you can't go out after 8 p.m. or you're going to get uh, a ticket for being out. I don't really understand why 8 p.m. though. I mean... You would figure at nighttime there's not really a whole lot of people anyway, you know? So, anyway, I, I don't really get it. But, hey, as long as we all quarantine ourselves and not get in touch with other people for two whole weeks, which is like the incubation incubation period, you know? If you don't come down with any kind of symptoms, three symptoms, um, coughing, fever, and shortness of breath. If you don't have any of those three things in two weeks... And you should be okay. And that way you don't spread it out to somebody else and they spread it to somebody else. So I get it, you know. But I'm a little disappointed, though, thinking that, you know, we're the best country in the world, right? Number one superpower, right? How do we not have enough supplies in stockpile? How do we not have enough uh, ventilators for everybody? How do we not have enough ICU beds? And then if the doctors and the emergency workers get sick, there'll be nobody to take care of us. You know what I mean? So that's scary. And I think it's scaring all the people in government too, is that they're like, wow, we got a slow jump on this, right? China and South Korea are getting a handle on it because they're doing 20,000, 50,000 tests a day where we've totally done only 5,000 tests a day. Completely ridiculous, man. Not to mention the stock market. I can't even tell you how much money I've lost in the stock market. Of course, you only lose that money had I sold it at the loss, right? Which I didn't, you know, but um, it's a little disconcerting. So my friend Jason Pate, he posts on um, Instagram and says that he sold out like of all his push mowers. I'm like, really? I haven't sold shit. I sold a transmission, an edger, uh, some other bullshit crap in the past few days, but that's it. I haven't sold anything, you know? I mean, hardly anything, you know? I uh, did sell a tractor last week, but few and far between, you know? But uh, he's got the golden touch. So, Jason, I've got 15 mowers back there. If you want them, you can have them and sell it and just cut me in. I don't care. I just want to get rid of them, you know what I mean? Listen, so I'm thinking that uh, with all that's going on, we may have terrible sales this year because you know what? Um, people are out there buying stuff like crazy over at Costco, man. There's lines around the block. My wife came back from her trip. Uh, she, you know, she works for the airlines. And let me tell you about the airlines, okay? They, uh, she works for United, okay, United Airlines, and they're cutting 50% of their capacity because they've lost 50% of their routes because... Europe, Asia, they're not flying there anymore, you know, so all the employees that and pilots and flight attendants and mechanics that work on those planes and stuff like that, um, they're not working on those planes anymore because we don't go there. So those planes are being dispatched to go in other places around the, the country and, you know, in other worlds and stuff, but in other countries, but um, not so much that area. So there's an abundance of airplanes sitting around. Mechanics, flight attendants, pilots that have nowhere to go, you know. So United's going to cut 50% of um, their employees, basically a furlough. Not really a layoff, but a furlough. Until times get better, they get rehired again. So my wife has been working there for 25 years. So she's got what's called seniority. 
seniority with the airlines is key, you know what I mean? So she's in the top 8,000 of those flight attendants, so she'll be safe for the time being, you know, which is good. But um, think about this. All the people that work with the sports arenas, uh, everything associated with shutdowns, right? They're not going to have any more jobs, you know? Not to mention the restaurants that I work for, they've all been ordered to shut down. So um, there is no restaurants out there open, you know, at least for the couple of weeks, you know. So people are going to be out of work, no money. The last thing they're going to be thinking about is their lawn care. So are we going to be able to sell our lawn tractors and our mowers and our edgers, weed whackers, chainsaws, leaf blowers? Are we going to be able to sell any of that stuff? Because are people worried about saving their money so they can buy food on the table and toilet paper? No, I'm going to buy a lawn tractor? No way, you know? So I think sales are going to be really bad this summer. Really bad. But uh, nevertheless, you got to have something to do, right? I'm still going to be wrenching. I'm still going to be putting out videos a day because <laughs> I've got seven tractors in the backyard that need attention, you know? And uh, it'll take me at least a week, you know, five to seven episodes per tractor, you know what I mean? Depending on how bad it is, of course. So far, this is only my third episode on this tractor, and it's... It's running and driving great. Um, when I do start it, though, you need to warm it up on choke for a little while before it starts running good. Otherwise, it'll surge and uh, it'll try to stall if I take it off a choke right away, which I'm not really too happy about, you know. But uh, when it is warmed up, it runs very well. Um, last night, when I was going to say, last night when she came back from her trip, uh, she went to San Francisco and via Houston. She came back last night and... Uh, she went to Costco on the way home to get some extra things, you know, because she's always thinking, we're going to need extra food. I don't, we need to stockpile all this food because if we're going to be stuck at home for two weeks, right, and all these restaurants and stuff are closed, we need to be able to survive during the two weeks. I'm sure we'll be fine. She bought like $700 worth of crap, you know what I mean? But she scored yesterday. Costco had a shipment of toilet paper. Huge big case of it uh, I don't know what it is four 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 so like 16 or 24 something like that rolls of toilet paper uh, Kirkland brand too so it's good and it's cheap uh, they only limited one per customer you should have saw <laughs> she had she had all these people online everybody had a big a big uh, case of toilet paper um, you know I don't really get the toilet paper thing to be honest with you I mean uh, I have a um, bidet thing in my uh, main bathroom you know it's like a little spray thing inside you know it's for women you know to wash their popo well just put the thing down here it goes and i tried it a few times like Ooh. you don't even really need toilet paper just go and use your hand and wash it wash your hand you know wash it it's clean really clean you feel very fresh too you guys should try it Instead of going over to uh, buy toilet paper, you should head on to Lowe's or Home Depot and get one of those spray nozzles and attach it onto your toilet. And shh, you can spray your balls. Anyway, so um, today, it's a rainy day. I was thinking about just parking this outside in my uh, uh, driveway and letting the rain get on it, and then I'll just wipe it down with a cloth. It'll look better than this, you know what I mean? Because this tractor's dirty. But I can't turn on my water yet outdoors to uh, hook up a power washer yet because my pipes are still winterized, you know. Um, when you have sprinklers, you have to winterize it so that in the winter it doesn't freeze and blow all your pipes, you know. We have to do that here. It sucks. Uh, I do it myself, but I used to pay somebody $50 every time to do it. But I do it myself with my air compressor. Um, like most wrenchers do, you should always think about doing things yourself and saving money. Saving money for a rainy day, like coronavirus, you know what I mean? This is an extra long monologue today because i got a lot of things to talk about, you know? About things in the world. See, I'm not just a wrencher, but I'm a philosopher too. Um, I hope you guys don't mind me ranting about certain current events in the world. But uh, So listen, first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to adjust the valves. Yes, I said I wasn't... Couldn't hurt unless I, you know, screw something up like strip a bolt or break a bolt or ruin the valve cover gasket. That could happen when you do stuff. But, you know, what I always like to say is if it ain't broken, don't fix it, right? Because you might do something else that breaks it, a perfectly working thing. But it's not really perfect because, like I said, it you have to choke uh, start it and let it run on choke for quite a while until it warms up, until it's smooth. Otherwise, it'll try to stall and... Um, 
kind of surge a little bit, you know. Anyhow, so uh, this is an MTD hood. Uh, they're not as easy to remove as the Craftsman's are. Um, the light harness does not have a quick disconnect uh, on it. So I have to take the light bulb modules out of the two sockets and let it hang there because you can't disconnect the wire to take this off. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I hope my voice sounds better today because I checked my lavalier, right? And it was on the lowest volume yesterday. Even though it did work as a microphone, it was still low in volume. So I think my voice is a little bit better today because I turned it up to the highest volume. Um, this lavalier works great. Um, I decided to use it all the time now because I remember in yesterday's video, I only used my furry boom mic, right, for just up close stuff, but it still really wasn't as clear as like this, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna get started on doing this, um, adjusting the valves. So normally I would have started this up and uh, let you guys listen to what it sounds like, which is what, um, which is what, what I'm not happy about. But because my son is back from the University of Washington, right, he's taking his final online exam right now in the computer room. And uh, I don't want to do anything to disturb his final. You know, it's the uh, chemistry last final of his uh, second quarter at school. They're on the quarter system. So he has supposed to go back for his third quarter, but right now everything's up in the air online learning, online exams, whatever, but uh, he's doing very well. He's got a 3.8 average. He has a $5,000 scholarship over there, so uh, I'm very proud of him because he's, you know, freshman in college, being away from home for the first time, away from your parents, learning responsibility, being an adult and all that, waking up for your classes, you know, doing well in your classes. I don't want to blow like 50 grand of tuition, you know, if he's just going to flunk all his tests, you know? But his uh, first quarter was very good. He had a 3.8 average, Dean's List. You got to maintain a 3.0 over there uh, to keep his scholarship. You know, they only gave him five grand, but five grand's five grand. You know what I mean? So he's doing all right, um, and I don't want to disturb that. So take my word for it. It, it. You have to choke it for a while until it warms up, until it runs smooth. Otherwise, it wants to stall once you take it off choke. So I'm going to take this hood off. Like I said, this wire connected straight to the uh, light harness, the modules. I'm just going to pull these light plugs out. Then I believe what it looks like is a pivot, just like the Craftsman. Ooh! And then I'm just going to set it over here because it's zip tied on there. Should I, just, should I just cut the zip ties? You know, I could do the valves this way. Right? I mean, why, why don't they just, why don't they just make a, a quick disconnect? You know what I mean? Why, why does it, why does it have to be like this? You know what I mean? It's zip tied here. Two wiring harnesses. There's no quick disconnect. MTD sucks. So here we go. Let's get started on a valve adjustment on a 20 horsepower Briggs single cylinder Intec. So first I'm gonna put a old towel right here because when you open this uh, valve cover, see, I'm gonna pull the spark plug wire out, or like they say in Canada. Oh, you're going to need a 3 8 impact or socket. Take four bolts out. Be careful not to strip it because I've done that before. Yeah, that was really in there. That was really easy to do. So you're going to get some Earl come out. You shouldn't have a lot unless you have gas in your Earl, which I've had before. Remove it slowly, not to damage or break your valve cover gaskets. Even though I have a few, 
So this is a good sign. It's not pouring out like uh, like mad because, oh, that's right. I just did an oil change yesterday. So Earl is good, and so are the gaskets. So we're going to take the spark plug out so I can ensure that I have the proper um, top dead center. So to get to top dead center, I have to differentiate between the compression and the exhaust stroke. You want to get it on the compression stroke so you can have both these loose to its limits so that you can use your feeler gauge like so to measure the air gap in between the two. The top is the exhaust, the bottom is the intake. The top is between, uh, through Briggs & Stratton's uh, specifications, right? Uh, the top is supposed to be f uh, five one thousandths to seven, so you use six. The bottom is uh, three to five one thousandths, so I use the middle, which is four. So four on the bottom, six on the top. Let's find top dead center first. You're going to need some torque wrenches. There's the spark plug. You're going to need a long screwdriver, a rag. Not 3 eighths. But anyway, so I have the spark plug out. I'm sticking it in the hole. I'm sticking it in the hole. I'm going to rotate it until I feel it. Ooh, right there. Right there is top dead center, and it's tight, which means this is the exhaust stroke. It's still pushing the valves open so that the exhaust will come out. So this is the exhaust stroke. I'm going to rotate it again to get to the compression stroke. Right there is top dead center, and this should be loose. And it is. But actually, it doesn't feel bad at all which means that these valves have been done. It feels good. Yep, that's top dead center, all right. But these feel pretty good. You know, usually they're really wobbly, you know? So this is four. Let's see, let's test the four. And it's pretty good. It could use some tightening, but it's pretty good, you know. Let's check the top exhaust. Six. Wow, six is good. These, these, these do not need, I mean, you know, a little. See? You could do it a little, but not a lot. I'm going to find a wrench that matches this. This looks like 9 sixteenths. Sorry, it's uh, 5 eighths. So look, since this is pretty tight already, you know, pretty good. Let's just make sure that's six. Yeah, it is. You normally take a torque, um, a torx wrench and put it in there and loosen it. But I think that since it's just a little smidgen of a bit, I can just turn it a little like that and tighten it. You know what I mean? See, it moves. Right there, that's pretty tight right there, see? Could actually turn it a little bit more, just a smidgen like that. That's pretty tight, you know, but it moves freely like that, but still with good resistance though. So I think that's going to be good enough. So normally you would take a Torx wrench, right, stick it in there and loosen it, then turn it and then tighten it while you're holding it. But we can do it this way too because it's already tight, super tight. So here's a uh, four. And while that's technically okay, it'll work. You see, that was pretty easy to turn. So you have to have feeler gauges. You can't do this properly without feeler gauges. So that, that's pretty good, you know what I mean? It's, that's good resistance right there. So surprisingly, these, uh, these valves are in are already done pretty well, so that's all you need to do, man. Um, I'm gonna kind of 
soak up the earl in the bottom here because this surface for the gasket has to be clean it's going to be tough to get it super clean because the bottom is saturated with earl i'm going to try to soak this up a little i've soaked up some of the oil over there on the edge taking some uh, brake cleaner from my friends over at lucas oil products this removes a lot of the grease and stuff, see? I have dirty rag and I'm just spraying it and it's like clean in that area that I sprayed it. So I'm just uh, cleaning this surface a little bit from the earl all the way around. Top is going to be nice because there's no earl. Find another cleaner part of the rag. Here's the valve cover, there's the gasket. I'm just gonna lightly clean the surface of this gasket so that it has a nice clean bond when we put it together. Get the earl out. Nothing crazy. The heat will soak up any extra earl there. The letters OHV are supposed to be upright. get the corners you don't want to overdo it because I have busted the bolts on this before and this impact is rated at 200 inch-pounds, so pretty powerful. You don't want to overdo it, just a bunch of clicks. When I mean clicks like that, click, one click, that's it. That is good enough. I'm going to reinsert this spark plug. So I don't think I'm really making much of a difference because the, the valves really weren't out of whack much at all on this so I think I still may have carburetor dialing that I need to do because when I first start this thing it on choke smokes a lot then you have to leave it on choke for a while to have the engine warm up otherwise once you bring it back down to uh, full throttle the surges a little and it wants to stall if you lower it any more than that Carburetors, carburetors. There'll be a day where um, we all just have fuel injected lawn tractors. So you have no carburetor issues. But you might have other issues. And put the boot back on and there you go. Valves are adjusted. Since I have the hood off here, I'm just going to spray some water and give it a wipe down. At least it, you know, at least it'll look better than, than that. I got to get the dirt out of it, you know.
what I did here. Just uh, sprayed water all over it, just to wipe down, you know. Uh, did some ATF on the hood, you know. Uh, used that 98 cent quick color paint that I got from Home Depot. Just covered up the uh, mower deck a little bit. <sighs> Fixed the seat, cracks. I didn't clean the wheels because wheels are really tough to clean. A lot of dirt in there, like mud. Look at the deck. Fix the crack on the seats. That deck looks really good. Somebody had spray painted something in the back there, so I went over it with quick color. Uh, a few episodes ago, I was just trying to get my uh, front tractor tires, the ones that have a slow leak, just get them all fixed, you know, because I have so many tractors back there that I know I'm going to need a replacement tire here and there, you know. All I need it is for it to hold air. I don't care about the cracks or the dry rots and all that stuff, as long as it holds air be able to ride the tractor around the yard you know so um, I had just pumped this up simply last time and while it holds air right after a week or so it goes kind of flat I mean it still has like 40 percent 50 percent air still in there so it's a very slow leak uh, somebody that I know one of my subscribers told me that I should try automatic transmission fluid so this is uh, ATF and it's uh, semi-synthetic from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. I had bought a container of slime. I used it. It seemed to work okay as long as you take the rim off and you slosh it around the sidewalls and stuff. It ought to kind of work, you know. So this was an empty bottle of slime. But I knew that I would need this container someday with the nozzle that you can stick right onto the uh, valve of the uh, tire. So I just filled this up completely with this uh, semi-synthetic automatic transmission fluid. That's right. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So it's in here, see? So since this has a slow leak, very slow, I figure I'd try it, you know, just for the hell of it. So I'm gonna take the valve out of here. I'm not gonna, I... That's right, mana. <laughs> take this valve out. Huh. I don't hear any air come out. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna put like uh, so. This is a 24 fluid ounce. They always recommended that you put eight fluid ounces of uh, slime. So that would be four uses per right. Four times eight is 32. Well, that's not right. All right, maybe three. Three times eight is 24, yeah. So three fills. I'm putting an abundance in here. An abundance of caution. All right, so I put about, I don't know, yeah, a third in there, so about eight ounces. I'm going to put the valve back in again. slosh it around because you know ATF is a lot more liquidy than slime would be slime would be more syrupy right well I guess ATF is kind of liquidy too but if I slosh it around so that it uh, will seal the beads around the rim maybe that'll work and I'll pump it up with some air and then give it her and and then wait 24 hours two days See if it held the error. See, that's pretty. That's pretty good right there.
I'm going to make sure that all this ATF is filling this tire. Not only that, this is fun. <laughs> so, uh, let's see if this works, you know? Tomorrow I'll let you know. So today we uh, adjusted the valves, didn't really need too much adjusting. Cleaned it up a little bit, did some paint, uh, spit spot uh, paint there and uh, fixed the seat. Now it looks a whole lot better. Oh, uh, you guys saw I also cleaned the lenses of the lights. Filthy, so much algae and I don't know what kind of bacteria is in there, you know. Maybe I should just stick it up my nose, the bacteria, you know, maybe that'll fight off coronavirus. I'll be immune to it, you know. Actually, that, that could be the secret right there. The algae and bacteria, stick it up your nose. That's a cure for coronavirus. Hey, it's accidents like that is what uh, discovered penicillin. You know, you find cures by accident. Anyway, thanks for joining me today on uh, just finishing up this um, MTD yard machines, 20 horsepower Briggs single cylinder overhead valve with a CVT that's uh, Continually variable transmission. Fancy way to say variable transmission. That's all it is. Uh, it's a pretty good tractor, actually. Um, I hope it uh, starts better now. Let's give it a try. But Harry, Ryan's taking an exam. Oh, he won't hear it. Are you sure? Yeah, it runs pretty good. Mowers and blowers!